Looking for a safe space to talk with like-minded women? Ebony Life is an online community for Black women. They cover a range of women's issues. Check out their chat, forums, and customized feeds. It's your man, Avant. It's going down, y'all. Myron Avant went from having dreams of serenading women with his voice to landing at the top of the charts with his steamy ballads. When his record label stopped having faith in him, he took it upon himself to make sure mainstream radio heard his music. But soon enough, changes in the entertainment industry and a lack of support hindered his career. Here's what really happened to Avant. Avant was born on April 26, 1978 in Cleveland, Ohio. He was raised by his mom, Alberta Avant, a telephone company employee. They lived around the corner from the projects, and Avant knew at an early age that growing up on the streets wasn't what he wanted out of life. He grew up in the church, and at the age of four, he began singing. He was inspired by some of the great R&B singers, such as the Levert family and Babyface. His uncle and older brother began singing in a nightclub to a venue full of women. Avant said this really appealed to him, and he wanted to be able to sing for the ladies as well. Once he stopped growing in high school, his chances of being an athlete were over. He told the Electronic Urban Report that he put all of his focus on music. Until his dream of becoming a musician could come true, he worked to different odd jobs, including a packing company and a peanut factory. But soon enough, his true calling pushed him to focus on singing and songwriting full-time. He graduated from Cleveland School of the Arts and teamed up with some friends to form a trio called The Fellas. They would perform at local talent shows, but it wasn't until Avant finally heard his recorded voice during a studio session that he realized how good he sounded. The owner of the studio, who was the uncle of Avant's then-girlfriend, was impressed by him as well. Although he wasn't interested in the other two group members, he encouraged Avant to go solo, and Avant agreed. He used his songwriting skills to create tracks for other people and caught the attention of Robert Kelly's manager, Eric Patton. Avant flew to Chicago and recorded the song, I Wanna Know, which became a hit on Chicago radio stations. Around this time, the studio owner's niece dumped him, and Avant told the boombox the breakup was the, quote, best heartbreak ever. He was able to take out his frustration by writing down some of the most relatable lyrics ever. But it would be a while before the world would connect with his pain. An exec at MCA Records heard some of Avant's music and loved it. Avant was invited out to Los Angeles to meet with Magic Johnson, who owned a record label through MCA at the time. As soon as Avant walked into Magic's office, Magic said, What's up, superstar? Avant became the first artist signed to Magic's label, and he started recording a bunch of songs that he had written a few years prior, including the song Separated, which was inspired by his ex-girlfriend. Separated was released in April 2000 and eventually landed at the number one spot on the Billboard R&B chart. His debut album, My Thoughts, dropped in May of that year, followed by his second single, My First Love, featuring Kiki Wyatt, which also landed at the number one spot. Avant was on fire, and the world was mesmerized by his songs that spoke about love, relationships, and all the highs and lows in between. Even though the album only sold 41,000 copies in its first week, it eventually went platinum and sold millions of copies worldwide within a few months. Despite his success, there were some people who weren't willing to give him a chance. Avant told Parlay magazine he was labeled a Robert Kelly wannabe. But not only that, he also had to go up against other talented male artists, including Joe and Brian McKnight. He wasn't about to let the naysayers ruin his dream of becoming a star, though. To keep the momentum flowing, he began working on his sophomore album. Ecstasy had everything a great R&B album needed, from sentimental songs to smooth beats. But once the album was finished, it sat on the shelf for months. According to Avant's unsung episode, every time he tried to release the album, MCA's marketing group told him the album didn't have any hit songs. So Avant had no choice but to take matters into his own hands. He and his team sent the song Making Good Love to a bunch of radio stations. And it didn't take long for listeners to agree that it was a hit. It became his third straight top 10 song. Proving that his music was resonating with his fans, MCA agreed to release his second album in March 2002. 
Avant was finally able to enjoy the fruits of his labor. He was able to help out his siblings and even bought his mom a house. But not everyone was happy with what he had accomplished. Some people who were influential in helping him kickstart his career when he lived in Cleveland thought he should have put them on and allowed them to work on some of his newer music. But Avant was so happy with the way his career was going, he didn't want to mess up his flow by switching up his new team of producers and writers. His third album, Private Room, was ready to go, but by this point, Magic's record label was on its last leg, and the label's relationship with MCA was growing sour. When MCA didn't know if they wanted to believe in Magic and his roster of artists, Avant had to take matters into his own hands once again. He gave radio stations the song Read Your Mind. Once again, he had an instant hit on his hands. The song peaked at number five on the R&B chart, and he finally got the go-ahead to release his album Private Room in 2003. MCA got acquired by Geffen Records. And as the label transitioned, Avant got rid of his longtime manager and producer to switch things up. He began working with a bunch of new people, including Jermaine Dupri, The Underdogs, and Rodney Darkchild Jerkins. Other opportunities opened up for him as well, including a 2004 cameo in the film Barbershop 2 back in business. His album entitled Director was released in 2006, but only had one hit single, the track Four Minutes. So he got dropped from Geffen Records. Avant picked up the pieces, signed with Capitol Records, and released his self-titled fifth album in 2008. Unfortunately, his time at his new label didn't last long. Avant told Billboard, I don't really have time for someone to try to figure out how to work with me or me with them. Ultimately, he signed with Verve Forecast Records and released The Letter in 2010, followed by Face the Music in 2013, which included the number one song, You and I, featuring Kiki Wyatt. He subsequently released his album, The Eight, in 2015. It peaked at number eight on the Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. A year later, while performing some of his hit songs, he found himself trending on Twitter for an unfortunate reason. In October 2016, a photo of the singer looking bigger than usual began to float around online, and a lot of people had negative things to say about it. One online user wrote, Avant went from reading your mind to only reading menus. Another photo taken at the event proved the singer may have just been photographed at an unflattering angle, but that didn't stop people from clowning his appearance. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be the last time Avant would make the news for all the wrong reasons. In April 2019, an uncredited website claimed he was battling lupus and only had six months to live. Thankfully, it was just a hoax. In 2019, Avant returned with a new single, Not Gone Lose. He also teamed up with writer Vincent Dixon for the book The Trial of Mankind, a story about the mistreatment of animals. He signed a new deal with SRG ILS Group and reportedly started working on his ninth studio album. The days of Avant bypassing his label and sending his music straight to radio stations are long gone. With the influx of artists, Avant says there just isn't enough room for every artist to be heard, especially a veteran musician like him. He told the Boombox website that mainstream radio doesn't respect older musicians because they think the younger generation isn't interested in old school R&B music. Nonetheless, Avant is glad he has always stayed true to himself. He told From the O website, he always has people in his ear telling him what kind of music he should make. But he would never record something that isn't aligned with who he is as an artist. He's too focused on staying true to himself and his fans. Avant's music tells a story and brings the listener along on every twist and turn of the emotional ride. However, he told Singer's Room website he's very careful about the messages he sends out to the world. In conclusion, he said, I'm about giving people what they need, not what they want. Let us know your thoughts on Avant's career, and thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.